Good evening. My name is Leslie Collum, and along with Amy Green, I am co-president of the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Before we begin, I would like to thank the Murfreesboro Communications Department for their co-sponsorship of this event. In particular, I would like to thank the staff of City TV and Alan Bozeman, Communications Director, for making the forum available to the viewing audience. We are pleased to collaborate with Mary Evans from Middle Tennessee State University American Democracy Project in the preparation of this forum. The American Democracy Project's goal is to produce graduates who understand and are committed to engaging in meaningful actions as citizens in a democracy. By working with students and faculty, the American Democracy Project seeks to nurture programs inside and outside the classroom that raise the levels of our campus community's engagement with the local, national, and global communities around us. Our moderators, Rebecca Conard and Laura Clark, are part of this project at MTSU. The League of Women Voters wants you to understand the power of your vote. The leaders you elect make the decisions that affect you, your community, and more. So please, vote on Election Day, November 6th, or participate in early voting, and make your vote count. Good evening. I am Laura Clark and I will serve as moderator for the forum this evening. The forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro, Rutherford County and the Murfreesboro Communications Department. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this forum. Tonight we will hear remarks from the Tennessee House District 37 candidates. Before introducing the candidates, I would like to outline the procedure for this forum. Each candidate will be allowed two minutes to make an opening statement. When both candidates have completed their opening statement, the first of several questions will be asked. The candidates have not been told what questions will be asked. Each candidate will be given two minutes to answer each question. In addition to answering the last question, the candidate may also make closing remarks if they wish. I will begin by introducing the candidates. They are each seeking election to a seat that is important to the citizens of Rutherford County. And we hope to hear them address the substantive issues facing all of us. I want to thank them for their gracious acceptance of our invitation to participate in this event. Sitting to my right and speaking first tonight is Robert New. And to my left is Dawn White. Mr. New, you may begin with your opening statement. I want to thank the legal women voters for inviting us here tonight. It's always good to see Dawn. Uh, Chad isn't here, but I guess he's on his way. And I want to thank to, thanks to the audience members who came here tonight to participate. My wife Linda and I have lived here in Rutherford County for 23 years. I'm a registered nurse for 37 years, and I've worked in home health care for the past 20 years. We have four adult children, 10 grandchildren, and five great-grandchildren. I'm running for state representative because I'm unhappy with the direction our state is taking. The current legislature is trying to turn back the clock. The gains that workers, minorities, and women have made are under attack. I pledge to protect the rights of the poor, the weak, the disenfranchised, and the middle class. Our state needs to provide an environment as attractive to businesses creating jobs. We need a quality education system that graduates students that are job ready or college ready. It's time for a change. We need to move Tennessee forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. And Ms. White, your opening statement. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters and Channel 3 for sponsoring this forum. A little bit about me. Again, my name is Dawn White. I'm a lifelong resident of Rutherford County. I grew up in Eagleville, attended Riverdale High School, and after high school, I attended MTSU, where I met my husband, Chad. 
After college, I taught at Black Fox Elementary in, here in Murfreesboro with some wonderful teachers. After um, teaching, I decided to open up my own small business. We have an internet business that sells vacuum cleaners and sewing machines online. We warehouse everything in Smyrna and have seven employees. A lot of people have said, Don, why in the world would you want to run for political office? Well, to me, the answer is just simple. We need more people in government with business and real world experience. We need people who will just use common sense and conservative principles when making decisions that will affect each and every one of us. My platform is just simple. It's three points. We need to get our economy back on track and create jobs for Rutherford County and Tennessee. Reform and improve our education system and just make Tennessee government smaller and smarter. I always love to hear from voters in the 37th district. Please feel free to email me any questions if your questions wasn't addressed during the form. My email is dawn at votedawn.com. Or you can go to the website to find out more about my issues and where my stances are at votedawn.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. White. Now we will turn to the first question, and Mr. New will answer first. Mr. New? Describe your background and tell us how it influenced your decision to run and how it will help you serve if elected. Well, like I said, I've been a registered nurse for 37 years. And as you said, nurturing people is what I do for a living. And having done this for the last 20 years, it's given me the opportunity to travel all around Middle Tennessee and see a variety of people. I go everywhere from the lowest socioeconomic uh, places to the highest. I see a lot of people who really struggle to get along. I see people who have to make choices between you know, buying food and taking medicine. And I don't think this is right. We need to help these people. You're judged by how you, how you uh, take care of the lesser members of your society. And I don't think we're doing a good job of that. And I will, if, I, if I'm elected, I will make sure that these people are not forgotten. There's been, like I, I said in my opening statement, there's been a lot of uh, legislation that is trying to uh, hurt the working men and women. There's been a lot of attacks on, on uh, the teachers and women in general, women's health issues, uh, women economically. This, probably 65% of your teachers are women. And uh, let me see. I think it's just you know it's important that uh, we take care of, we take care of the lesser of people in our in our state. Uh, and if I liked it, I, you know, I plan on doing that. And I would appreciate their voting for me. Thank you, Mr. New. Ms. White, describe your background and tell us how it influenced your decision to run and how it will help you serve if elected. I believe that I made my platform out of my experiences. As a classroom teacher, I learned very quickly, very early on in my career, that education decisions cannot be uh, made by bureaucrats. It's never even seen the inside of a classroom. You must have the inputs from parents, teachers, and local school board members. Um, a one-size-fits-all approach in our education system is not going to work. You know, right now teachers are being asked to teach to the test and not to the individual child. Um, I, I know that we can reform our education system, and again, that is my first uh, platform issue. My second is to get our economy back on track um, and to help create jobs. And as a small business owner, I know that government is always in the way, and we need to get government out of the way and let businesses do what businesses do best, and that's hire people and help our economy along the way. Um, when I 
first hired my first employee, I was so excited. It was a wonderful day, but I saw all the red tape we had to go through and all the government regulations we had to do. And I think that discourages people from opening up businesses and expanding their business. And frankly, we just need to get government out of the way. Thank you, Ms. White. And candidates, tonight I will, I will, I will say the question first. And if you would like for me to repeat it when you are the second speaker, just ask, and I'll repeat it for you on the second time, okay? So on the second question now, Ms. White, you'll speak first. Second question, what do you feel is the number one issue facing Tennessee in the next five years, and how would you address that issue? To me, that answer is just simple, jobs and the economy. We need to run our government the same way we run our businesses and our households. To me, that is just common sense. We need to eliminate and scale back the excessive regulations and help Tennessee become more of a business-friendly state. Part of this includes reforming our tax system and making us more competitive and also tort reform to help businesses out. Another way to create jobs and improve Tennessee's economy is to improve our education system. Better schools will lead to more opportunities and high paying jobs right here in Rutherford County. I look forward to fighting for less government and frankly just less red tape for small businesses. As your state representative, I will fight to make Tennessee the best possible environment for new businesses to locate here and for existing businesses to thrive. Thank you, Ms. White. Mr. New? Well, uh, jobs are the number one issue. I was reading something uh, recently that uh, Tennessee is the third poorest state in the country. The average household income is only $40,000 a year. That's, that's basically if your husband and wife are working, that's two $10 an hour jobs. I was at a, a builders and realtors uh, function a few weeks ago, and one of the realtors said, people making $10 an hour can't even afford to buy a starter home. This is where I think the, uh, we need to concentrate on education. Like I said, people need to be job ready or college ready when they get out of high school. And when I say job ready, I think we need more vocational programs so that people that, not everybody needs to go to college, uh, but I think everybody needs some kind of training. The jobs of the future are gonna take more than uh, just a high school education. A lot of people are always lamenting the jobs that have gone to Mexico and India and other places. Those jobs are gone forever. They're never coming back. The jobs of the future, it's going to be, there, there's somebody like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs working in their garage. There's going to be a whole new technology that's going to be developed, whether it's energy or solar. And we need to prepare it for this. And as far as, as, far as uh, state regulations, there needs, there needs to be regulations so that the consumers are protected from you know, unscrupulous businesses. We do, we do need rules, and I know businesses probably don't like them, but they are necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. We heard the candidates' views on the number one issue facing Tennessee in the next five years. Now I'd like to know, what is your vision for Tennessee in 10 to 20 years? And Mr. New, you'll, if you'll answer that first, please. Well, hopefully we will uh, we won't be the third poorest state in the country anymore. That our education system uh, will improve, and we will be graduating uh, more people from high school, more people from colleges. We need we need more people that have uh, engineers, scientists, scientists. These are the kind of jobs. These are the kind of high-paying jobs that are going to help our economy. When, more, when people make more money, they spend more, there's more taxes. It's better for, it's better for the economy of the state. Uh, 
we're not gonna we're not gonna get any better if we're just uh, you know building warehouses or call centers. Those jobs are low paying, and it's it's not gonna help this state grow and progress. Uh, I was I was reading there uh, that uh, Governor Haslam had you know said that the reason the way they're gonna uh, attract uh, more businesses is by having the lowest taxes and the least regulations. Well, if that's if that's the case, you know every business in the country ought to be building here, and they're not. So there, there's more to it than that. There, there's more to, the, the, to attract businesses than just low taxes and no regulations, because the wealthiest the wealthiest uh, states in this country, like uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, Massachusetts. They have the highest taxes and the most regulations, but this is where a lot of the businesses are going. Thank you. And Ms. White. Um, I believe education reform. Um, again, we have got to get parents, teachers, and local school board members back into our education system. The current standards for teacher evaluation was designed to increase teacher results and accountability while improving student scores, but these standards were well intended. Unfortunately, again, these teachers are being forced to teach to a test and not an individual child's needs. We have got to reform our education system. Um, a one-size-fits-all approach, not going to work. We've tried it, not working. Um, as things stand right now, the, the role is setting these education standards. Teachers need to have input and flexibility while teaching, and parents, of course, need to be involved in that classroom, and that is how I feel we can turn our education system around. Thank you, Ms. White. And your remarks lead into the next question. And it is, what are the greatest challenges facing the public education system in Tennessee? Please consider both K-12 and higher education in your answer. And Ms. White, would you begin, please? Yes. First, let me talk about how we're our education. Governor Haslam has recently been working on a series of reforms for our higher education system. I look forward to seeing what the administration proposes in the next upcoming session and look forward to working with them to improve our higher education system. Having a great system of higher education is crucial in our state for economic development standpoint. I am a very strong supporter of MTSU. Most days, you'll see me out tailgating before a game or at a basketball game. I am very proud of higher education here in Murfreesboro. Um, I am also very proud of our legislation delegation and the governor working so hard to fund the new science building at MTSU. But let's be honest, the reality here is there will not be a lot of new funding for higher education in the new term. We just need to prioritize where we spend our money and make sure we're spending our taxpayers' money in the most efficient way possible. We also need to make our colleges, universities, and technical institutions meeting the needs of the workforce needed for Tennessee businesses by providing the right courses and the right training for all of our students to succeed. Thank you, Ms. White. And Mr. New. Well, I agree with Dawn on that point that uh, teaching to the test is, is not good. Um, our teachers have gotten entirely too much blame for the failure of our education system. I mean, there's lots of blame to go around. I, I am convinced that uh, if a student shows up every day, studies, uh, has good time management skills, and gets along good with others, they will succeed in school. And it doesn't matter if it's the best high school in the, in the state or the worst. A recent, a recent study has shown that uh, the, you know, the ACT and SAT scores are poor indicators of how well people will do in school. If you look at their grade point average, if people have good grade point averages, that shows that they persevere and they have the good time management uh, uh, skills. These are the skills that will transfer to college and make them successful in college and in life. 
uh, as far as higher education, uh, the governor put $263 million into uh, the 2012-13 uh, budget for new college construction. It is important that we, we graduate, like I said before, we need to graduate engineers, scientists. These are the people that are going to, these are the people that are going to have the good paying jobs that are going to help the state. These are the people that, these are the kind of employees that uh, companies will look for that are, that are high tech, that are manufacturing companies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. Question number five. Considering America's economic situation, how do you evaluate how well the economy of Tennessee is doing at this time? Mr. New, would you respond first? We are fortunate, the, the people that live here, in, particularly in Rutherford County and in Middle Tennessee, we are much better off here than uh, a lot of places around the country. Uh, our, you know, this is still a dynamic area. There's lots of growth at Nissan. Uh, we've had uh, Volkswagen come into uh, the state in the last couple of years. Uh, Saturn, the Saturn plan is, uh, is going to start building cars again. So I think that we've 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 done we've done well compared to other parts of the country. I know there are some people that are suffering. I've talked to the real estate people, and they aren't happy. Although the real estate market is up, I was reading the other day in the paper that uh, sales were up in uh, Davidson County by 27 percent. So that's a good indicator when people are buying homes. Um, but I, I think in general, I think we're we're better off here than than other places in the country. Um, probably because of the, because of our location, you know, we're the I think we're within a 600 mile radius. Half the population of this country lives, so we still have lots of uh, distribution and warehousing here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. Miss White. I think we can uh, measure that by the industries we're uh, recruiting here, by the jobs we're creating, um, by the businesses that want to come to Rutherford County in Tennessee. And I think an, another important way that we can increase that and get more here is by our tax reform. Um, I will work to reform our state tax code and lower the burden to attract more businesses and help our economy. Um, I am against a state income tax in any form. And let's face it, we honestly have a state income tax. It's called the Hall Income Tax. And I'm working to repeal that and lower and reduce the sales tax on food. Um, the fact is that that whole income tax, it's deterring people from coming to Tennessee because it's an unfair tax um, on seniors, business owners, and investors. And I will um, oppose a state income tax in any form as your representative. And I am going to work to repeal the whole income tax so we can truly be an income tax free uh, state and recruit more businesses and be more business friendly. Thank you, Ms. White. Question number six. So we spoke about Tennessee's economic uh, situation. What can be done to e improve and expand economic development in Tennessee? And Ms. White, would you respond first? Of course, doing away with the tax code. Uh, and with tax reform. Um, we did a good job last session with reduce of sales tax on food. Um, another huge burden um, on Tennessee will be Obamacare. Um, unfortunately, it have a chilling effect on our job creations, and I will fight to repeal Obamacare. Um, we need um, health care reform, but a massive government takeover of our health care system is not the answer. I'm in favor of a free market common sense solution um, to this problem and allowing insurances to be purchased across state lines and promoting um, competition among our insurance markets. And I think that will, um, you know, Obamacare will take a huge toll on our economic development here in Tennessee as well. 
Thank you, Ms. White. Mr. New, would you respond to that? Could you repeat the question? Sure. What can be done to improve and expand economic development in Tennessee? Well, as far as taxes go, we're, we're one of the lowest tax states in the country right now. Uh, I think there's maybe, we're probably second or third lowest. Uh, and like I said before, there's, if that was the only thing, there'd be every business in the country would, would want to come here. We're in competition with every other state plus foreign countries and trying to attack, attract new jobs. And I know tax, low taxes are good. Uh, I did see the government or the governor put a seventy million dollars uh, into the next year's budget in order to uh, promote uh, bringing uh, businesses into the com into the state or expanding existing businesses, which is good. Uh, we probably need to do more of that because ev everybody else is doing this, and um, and Don brought up the Affordable Care Act. Uh, of course, I, I disagree with that. I'm in the healthcare business. Anytime more people have insurance, it's good for the healthcare business. The healthcare business is the number one business in this country. And there are some of the biggest healthcare co corporations in the country are based here in Middle Tennessee. You've got Health Corporation of America, its corporate headquarters is in Nashville. They just announced that they're going to uh, build two new buildings and add 2,000 more jobs. Uh, plus, in, right here in Murfreesboro, we've got National Health Corporation. Uh, they're a national corporation in uh, long-term care and home health. So health, uh, you know, insurance is good. Insurance reform is good for us. It's good for Tennessee. It'll add, it'll add jobs here. It's good for the health care industry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. Now, let's move to some more general questions. And the first one would be, what do you feel are the three main responsibilities of a state representative? And Mr. New, would you begin? Well, I think number one would be serving your constituents. That's probably all, always number one. Um, trying to promote businesses whether it's you know working with uh, other agencies within the within the county, like the you know the Chamber of Commerce, uh, that would probably be two. And I got to think about three for a minute. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, but uh, those those things serving your serving your constituents and uh, trying to and working with other people in your county to develop businesses would be the most important things. Okay, thank you, Mr. New, Miss White. Yes. Um, during the primary, I had the honor of going door to door, visited so many homes, uh, personally called people and got a feel of what's important to them. And of course, number one, we cannot stress enough, jobs and the economy, um, getting the economy back on track, making Tennessee the most business friendly um, state in the country. And you know, um, getting people back to work. That's something they're very concerned about. Um, reforming and improving our education system. Um, I talked, of course, during the primary in August, um, a lot of teachers were out for summer break. I talked to so many of them. And, you know, they're concerned about what they're having to teach to test, and they're not meeting that individual child's needs. And so education reform is uh, second on my list. And then just making government smaller and smarter, giving, getting government out of the way. Um, everybody knows that government does not create jobs, businesses do. And that goes back to the first point of getting that economy back on track. And when we get government out of the way, we're letting business, um, I mean, letting businesses do 
and what they do best, creating jobs. And then, um, you know, there's over 200 departments in our state government. We need to look at those. Of course, we can consolidate some of them. And that is just in my platform of smaller, smarter government. Thank you, Ms. White. If elected to the legislature, you will be faced with many choices, many decisions. And so my question, my next question is, how do you determine priorities when achieving all the goals is not possible? Ms. White? I think we have to listen to our constituents. And again, going door to door, talking to people, um, you know, go into businesses, go into homes. Um, the job and economy, number one on people's list. Um, as a former teacher, of course, I still have friends in the education system, still keep up with them on Facebook, email back and forth. And again, education ref uh, reform, uh, improving our education system. And of course, talking to parents. They are concerned about their child's education and what is their future going to be? And is their child gonna be able to be competitive in the job market once they get out of a high school? Or could they go on to a college with the education we have now? Um, and then again, my next priority is smaller, smarter government, just get letting government get out of the way. Thank you, Ms. White. Mr. New. Can you repeat that question again? Sure. If elected to the state legislature, you will be faced with many choices and many decisions. How do you determine priorities when achieving all the goals is not possible? Yeah, I think jobs and education are the uh, you know probably the number one goals that uh, that we need to look at. And if you look at what the state has done uh, the last couple of years, uh, they talk a lot about education. What did they do last year? They spent most of the time attacking teachers and trying to break their union. That didn't that didn't help education. Um, as far as far as education goes, you have to have students that are willing to learn, that are teachers that are willing to teach, and you have to have parents that are involved. If if you don't have those three things, this education system is going to fail. Uh, I also has been going out and doing some door to door, and I was talking to a gentleman a couple of weeks ago, and he told me that uh, politicians always play the child card at every election. And he said they've had 50 years to fix education in the state, and they still haven't done it. And he's probably right. They haven't done it. And I don't know if, this, if they ever will do it. Um, you got to have the will to do it. And I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that we do here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New. Question nine, T Tennessee General Assembly faces many challenges. What are the biggest challenges you see facing the Tennessee General Assembly? Mr. New? Facing the General Assembly, well, it goes back to, um, you know, jobs and education. You know, these are the things they should be, you know, concentrating on and and they're not. I mean, they're passing the you know the saggy pants bill and the uh, the guns in the trunk. They're trying to get the guns in the trunk bill passed. They should be concentrating on trying to stimulate the economy here, bring more businesses into the state, and and really reform education. And I still think that. Uh, it hasn't been brought up, this, but a lot about talk about charter schools and vouchers. Uh, I, oppose, I oppose both of those. I think they take away money from the public education. If, uh, I've talked with some teachers recently, and they think that it's not if, it's when, that the, uh, there's going to be a flood of charter schools in this state. And I think what's going to happen, if that, ha if, if that uh, does happen, 
you're going to end up with two education systems. You're going to end up with a public education system for the poor people, and you'll have a charter school system for the rich people. And that's just not good for us. Thank you. Okay, Mr. New. Ms. White. Of course, jobs and the economy um, is number one. We've got to get Tennessee back to work. We've got to create jobs. Um, and we've got to make Tennessee a business-friendly business, business friendly state. Um, another challenge I see um, come January is Obamacare. How are we going to f afford Obamacare? Um, of course, you know, Obamacare has um, said that if you will expand your Medicaid program, which is known in Tennessee as 10 care, the federal government will pick up the cost from 2014 to 2016 um, if we'll expand 10 care. Well, this so-called free money is going to run out in 2017 and the estimated cost to Tennessee is going to be 300 million dollars where's this money going to come from Tennessee cannot afford this um, so I just really believe in um, January if we do not elect a new president and a new Congress um, to repeal Obamacare that that's going to be a huge burden on Tennessee and you know going to be a hot topic in January for the state legislature Thank you, Ms. White. The media offers a window between the people of Tennessee and their government. What role should the media play in informing citizens of issues? And how will you engage with the media in keeping your constituents informed? Ms. White? Oh, I believe the media plays a very important part. Um, I believe the media has the power to report um, the facts and to, you know, not everyone can go up to Nashville um, during session. And so I think we have to rely on the media. Of course, I'll have an open door policy. Um, I'll encourage people. And of course, my Vote Dawn website will remain up. Uh, the email address will still remain the same. Of course, I'll have a state uh, legislature email that you can also email me through. Um, but, you know, I want to use the media. I want to be in contact with the media to get out to the people in the 37th district, what I'm doing, what I'm accomplishing, and to hear their concerns and their thoughts. Um, and I believe that we can use the media in a very powerful source. Thank you, Ms. White. Mr. New. Uh, using the media is, is very important. Um, you know, during this election, uh, there's been, uh, I've had a lot of contact with, uh, you know, reporters from the Daily News Journal, primarily, and a few from the Tennessee, and, and so, yeah, use, using the, the newspapers and the radio and TV is important to get your message out. Uh, also, now, nowadays, it's, uh, all your newspapers are seem to be going to online, and, Probably eventually there won't be any newspapers as as we know them anymore. Everything will be a online coverage, so uh, you can even get better coverage there, and that's I think available to more people. Uh, is the, the readership of the newspapers keeps uh, decreasing, and online use keeps going up. So you know I do think it's uh, it's it's really important that uh, we maintain close contact with our news media so that we can keep our constituents informed of what's going on. Thank you, Mr. New. The next question is um, touching again on your philosophy. Considering both the short and long term of your work in the legislature and your time in decision making, Tell us how you think legislative decisions should be made to match services with revenue. So how would you make decisions to match the services we provide with the revenue that is available? Mr. New. Well, I mean, in, in this state, uh, you have to balance the budget every year, so you only have uh, so much money to work with. Uh, and it's, and it would be hard, you know, it's hard to prior, prioritize 
Uh, if you've been reading the paper recently about the uh, you know Department of Human Children Services, they had 31 children die in their service in the past year, which is uh, which is terrible. There, this goes back. This is what happens when you cut budgets too much. When you don't have enough people to answer the phones. There was a reading the uh, reading an article in the newspaper this morning that. 25% of all the calls that are made to report child neglect or abuse aren't even answered. They don't have enough people to answer the phones. Even the governor, even the governor made a statement. He was concerned about the starting salary that we're paying the social workers that work in these departments as $26,000 a year, and he didn't think that was enough. That uh, that was one of the reasons they had the high turnover in this department. So you, you need to be you need to be careful when you when you cut these budgets because there there is a there is a direct effects, you know, uh, especially you know services like this that you know protect children and the elderly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New and Ms. White. I think we have to live within our means. Um, I am not for raising taxes. Um, I think we're taxed enough. Um, I am for growth. I am for getting businesses in here to grow our economy. Um, and I think if we can do that, of course, some of the revenue will come. But I am not for taxes. Um, I also think we just need smaller, smarter government. Um, you know, the more government we always add to things, you know, it always seems to get messed up even more. So we need to get government out of the way. Um, you know, during these hard times, we're doing more with less. Why is our government not doing the same as we're running our households and our businesses? You know, um, just an audited of the parole board um, that Governor, Governor Haslam did showed that we had dead felons that were still being monitored on our parole uh, board, and some of our parolees was not even being monitored. Um, you know, we need to audit departments to see where we can cut out waste. Um, and again, we're just going to have to do more with less, just like during these hard times we're doing in our households and our businesses. Thank you, Ms. White. And now our last question tonight. There's been a lot of attention given to voter registration. Now that people are registered to vote, what would you say to your constituents to encourage them to get out to vote? And please incorporate your closing statement in your answer. Ms. White. It is so important. I talk to, you know, my friends and, um, people that I go to church with, people that are my neighbors, and they say, oh, I'm not registered to vote because my vote doesn't matter. Every vote matters, um, especially here at the local level. You know, you've heard of um, elections that people win by five votes, 11 votes. Those five people that took the time to vote, those 11 people that took the time to vote, it mattered. Um, so I just encourage everybody to get out and vote um, because, you know, it's your voice. You have no right to complain if you don't express your voice and your vote is your voice. Um, I just want to thank um, Mr. New. It's been a pleasure running against you in the general. Um, and again, League of Women Voters for taking your time out um, to sponsor this event. Thank you. Um, again, Again, let me just restate what is important to me after talking to people in the district um, and what I believe and why I'm running. We need jobs and to get our economy back on track. Reforming and improving our education system is key to me as a former teacher. That's where my heart and passion lies. And just to make our government smaller and smarter. Um, I have lived here all my life. Um, I decided to run because truly I love Rutherford County. I grew up here, my heart is here, my business is here, my home is here. And I want everyone to know what I already know, that Rutherford County is the best place to live, but I want to make it even better. Thank you for your time. And Mr. New, with all the attention given to voter registration recently, now that people are registered to vote, what would you say to your constituents to encourage them to get out to vote? And please incorporate your closing statement. 
Well, like Dawn was saying that, uh, especially on a local level, um, every vote counts. Uh, when I ran for county commissioner in 2002, uh, the election was won by one vote. That's, that's, how, that's how important every vote is. Uh, as far as summing up, uh, you know, jobs and education are still the most important things here in Tennessee. We need to do everything we can to uh, you know, promote job growth, and attract more industry to the state. Uh, and we need to, you know, we need, we need to uh, assure that our education system uh, is strong. I mean, we have one of the uh, lowest rated education systems in the country here in Tennessee. And we need to improve this. Uh, as far as health care goes, I disagree with Dawn on this. Uh, I, I believe in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I think it's good for it's it's going to be good for us here because of all the health care business that's in Tennessee. It's going to provide more jobs. Anytime more people have insurance, the chances of you get paid go up. As far as uh, smaller government goes, Tennessee has one of the most efficiently run governments in the state and ha in the country, and it has had for a number of years. I'll get to my closing statement then. Uh, again, I want to thank the Legal Women Voters for having us here tonight, and uh, thank Dawn. We've, we've enjoyed uh, campaigning with you, and I want to remind everybody that early voting starts t uh, Wednesday, October 17th through November 1st, and Election Day is November 6th. If anyone has any questions or you want to contact me, you can visit my website at electbobnew.com, and I'll get back with you, and you can also visit me on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. New, and thank you, Ms. White. Once again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters, Cable Commission, and City Communications Department, I want to thank both the candidates for their participation tonight. I also want to recognize the staff of Communications Department for their cooperation in presenting this program. I also want to remind all of you to go to the polls beginning October 17th and to exercise this important right to, de to determine who represents you as, what, excuse me, as well as in the other important positions in this election. May we close with a round of applause for these candidates. Thank you.